Um, this first unit, again, we you, you did the get ready last time, but about different types of graphs that you may have made in the past. And advantages and disadvantages of each of those types of graphs. And misrepresenting data. Isn't that a good thing? You're going to learn how to misrepresent data and critique data that you see presented. It isn't just about, oh, more often in real, in real life, real life, what you have to do is read graphs, think about whether it's true, what it's showing you, think about whether it's presented in a fair way. It's not as often as you're asked to make a graph. All right. So that's why some of the things in grade 8 are the way they are. So the first thing is advantages and disadvantages of different graphs. When I give you these handouts, I want you to make sure you look at this focus on thing here. It's coordinated with what's in the textbook. That's what you're going to learn. So before you start, it's a good idea to know what you're going to learn. You're going to know how to compare information from different graphs and think about some of the advantages and disadvantages of, of different types of graphs. All right. So we're going to write down a few notes here about each of these types of graphs as to what they are good for. What are some of the advantages or what, is, what do we, some of these graphs allow you to do? What, what kind of data do you present in a bar graph? Give me an example or explain what kind of data you might present in a bar graph. Well, I mean, the one that's here is different types of books and how many of each of those books. Can you think of some other kind of bar graph you might? This is probably the most common kind of graph you see, like, like students. students. This kind of graph is probably the first kind of graph you made when you were in kindergarten or something like that. It might have been like, who has blue eyes? Who has brown eyes? You put all the colors down here. Or maybe even favorite color. Okay, we'll put red and all this now. We're not, not eye color anymore. But uh, you put all these different colors here and you say and you count how many people like red, whatever. And you you probably made, in grade in kindergarten, you probably did actual like little symbols or something. And then at some point you decided, well, we don't have to do symbols. We can just say here's three and here's two and here's one. Let's just do a bar that goes up to that. That's what a, a bar graph allows you to compare data in different categories, okay? If you guys are talking, it would be great if you stopped right now. That would be good. If you want to say something here, you got to put your hand up. Compares data, can we say across categories? So one set of data across categories. When I say data, numbers, right? You can look at different numbers across some categories. There's categories here. And there are the data or the numbers here, right? Data, numbers. The idea is that you write this down, by the way. Okay, That's why I gave you this handout. This handout is made so that you can add notes to it. Okay, It helps you from having to write out the whole thing yourself. I still see some of you like this. Maybe that means you wrote it down already. I don't know. But uh, when we're talking about something together here, it's important that you write down what you need to be writing down. Okay? So find something to write with. Put those notes down on there. Second kind of graph that's there. Well, actually, let's go out of order here a little bit. Let's look at the one down below, a double bar graph. A bar graph allows you to compare data, a single set of data, across categories. What does a double bar graph allow you to do then? What do you think? Yeah, a pair of, like a, two sets of data, a pair of data. Okay. This allows you to compare two sets of data across categories. Right again, there's the now the thing is you need the scale to be the same here, right? Both of these have to be whatever this scale is. If this is number of books, both of those bars have to represent number of books. And then the categories have to be the same here. The data has to have the same categories and the same values there, right? 
in order to use a double bar graph. Okay, what about some of the other ones up here? What does a what does a line graph allow you to show, and how is it different? What do you think? It shows you like progression. Absolutely, it shows you kind of progression over time. Uh, how about we say examine? It shows better, maybe shows data over time or shows a progression of data over time. Over the course of time, this is going to be time down here, usually. A broken line graph like that, they call it a line graph, broken line graph. This is time down here, almost always. And this is some kind of number or value. This is the kind of thing that if they show, uh, you know, some business meeting, they always have a graph going like that, and hopefully the line's going up, not down, right? The sales are going up. Question about this or comment? Yeah, it really, it really emphasizes the difference, right? It's, it really clearly shows whether it's going up or down. Like you could do that same thing over here. You could use a bar graph for that. But it really emphasizes the fact that it's going up or down because you can see the line's going up or the line's going down. You could instead have a bar that's the height of each one. But if what you want to do is you want to really emphasize the fact that something's going up or down, a line graph is sometimes a really good good choice of graph. All right. It's still the same thing. The data or the numbers are here. And then there's time or whatever down here. Okay. Then what does a double line graph do? Once we've done the first one, the second one's easy, right? Line graph, double line graph. What's a double line graph allow you to do? This shows a single set of data over time. So what does this do? Yeah, you can look at two things at once, right? This is presumably like two schools or something like that. Okay, there's two schools, Riverside and Hillview. Okay, that's pretty clear that one is going up, one's going down. Imagine if you made a double bar graph out of that. A double bar graph is good if you want to compare in each category, right? It's really easy to compare and say, look, this one's more here, but this one's more here. If what you want to emphasize is overall what's happening is going up or down, sometimes a line graph is a better choice because it's really clear here. This is going up, this is going down. Okay, we're going to put some of these numbers in in, a, in some software in a minute, and you'll see, right? So if you want to put some numbers down there, shows or compares compares two sets of data or more. It could be more. You could say a multiple line graph. You could have three, I guess. As soon as you get too many, it gets really confusing, though. Two sets of data over time. All right. And then a couple of other types of graphs that you may have seen before. A circle graph is something different. What does a circle graph allow you to show? What is it good for showing? What do you think? Somebody different who hasn't said anything want to say something before I pick people who've said stuff before? I want to hear everybody's voice here. No one's. No one wants to be brave? No? What do you think? Percentages. Percentages? So what does it show that maybe these other kinds of graphs don't show? Like what is it? What's really? What's the first thing that jumps out at when you look at that graph? You glance at it, what's the first thing that stands out? This is huge, right? This is the first, that's, that's, the, that's the majority of whatever it is this is showing. Even before you read this, you see this is the majority. Half of it is chat lines, right? This is, this, a, a circle graph is good for showing what fraction of a whole number it is. How something is split up, like how a, how a, a set of stuff is, is uh, split up. So how are these 20 hours split up? That's what this is showing. Shows fraction or, or percentage or portion of a hole with a, with a W, <laughs> not a hole in the ground, of a hole. Of, of the entire whole 20 hours, what percent is is used up for each thing there, okay? What percent of that 20-hour day or whatever, a week, sorry, a week on the internet. And then the last one here, pictograph. 
what does that show? It's actually pretty similar to another one, even though it doesn't uh, look like that. And I think I already alluded to this before when you're in kindergarten. What is it like? It's sort of like a bar graph, only it's with symbols, right? In, in kindergarten, this is probably the first type of graph you would do. Because in kindergarten, you want to say, you like, one symbol represents one thing. You guys are far older than that now, and you're far more sophisticated, and you can see that that bar is meant over here to represent nine, right? But if we were in kindergarten, we would have to draw one individual little block for each thing or one picture, right? So that's the difference. But it's it's similar to a bar graph, right? But similar to a bar graph shows data over categories, right? Data over categories. 